Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how you can trade Wix and how you can implement it into your trading. Wix are one of the most important things that you need to follow when it comes to price action because it gives you so much information about what is going on in the market, what kind of zones are holding and not holding, are we having a rejection or a potential Wix fill. There's so much they do and there's so much information they provide to us that I just feel that I really wanted to make this video for you guys so you will be able to learn it. So let's get started. So why are Wix important? Well, first of all, Wix are super important because they show a sign of rejection and a potential reverse. So they give you so much impor important information that you really need to understand when it comes to reading market structure, especially when you put these two confluences together, you have something very powerful. A week is a sign of exhaustion, meaning that when price goes up to an area and we start seeing that it gets uh, pushed down or pushed up, it's actually show, showing rejection and showing exhaustion. Price is getting tired, buyers or sellers are losing power and the opposite are taking control. So it's very important when we see a wick that we try to implement it right away into our confluences and our structure knowledge. Buyers and sellers are losing control over the momentum. So there's you know, momentum being lost, meaning that we can enter based on momentum loss so we will have a shorter stop loss we will have more rejection and we will have more confluences that a trade will go in our direction a week is also a footprint for take profits and i will teach you guys that also and show you now with chart examples so don't worry about that it's great for finding a good stop loss like i said wicks are super easy to identify your stop loss you don't have to use zones or anything like that you just need that wick so what is a wick? Well, a wick simply looks like this when you have a long tail, basically. So here you can see that we have a wick. So this was a bullish candle, first of all, because it's green, meaning that the candle went up in the beginning. So basically this whole candle was filled. So this wasn't a wick in the beginning. It was basically a whole candle as you can, as you can see right here. But unfortunately, there were sellers coming into this area and they were pushing price down. So basically there were sell orders, sell orders gathered right here. And when the price decided that I'm going to go in there, this is what happened. Price comes up and then it starts pushing down. Okay. And while you see that push down being created, price is actually creating that tail that you can see that long wick. Okay. And that's what happened right here. But as you can see, it's still closed green though. That means the buyers were still a little bit in control. If we would have closed a little bit below, maybe around this area, we would have been, had a red candle. The whole price action would have changed. But as you can see, so it closed bullish, but it still shows a very big sign of rejection. As you can see, it's a very big zone. On the other hand, here we can see a pin bar, for example, because we have a wick to the top side right here. So it shows that we have rejection to the upside, but price also rejected the bottom. Okay. So it means that we have both strong buyers, which is located down here, but we also have strong sellers, right? Which is located up here. So basically what price did was it would, it, it, uh, it was going through a ping pong phase. <laughs> I like to call it ping pong. So basically on the lower time frame, it would have looked like this. You would have had two zones that price was moving uh, between and basically price would have moved like this. And then it would have stopped at this level right there, right in the middle. Okay. So the price we see here from the past, that's that wick. And what we can see down here, sorry, like that, right? Down here, it's this wick, okay? So that's when price moves between two zones on the lower time frame and basically consolidates, okay? This is basically consolidation that the higher time frame is telling you what the lower time frame was doing. So that's pretty powerful to know as well. That's why wicks are very, very good. And they tell you different stories between different time frames. A daily rejection wick can tell you so much what is going on in the four hour what is going on on the one hour and 50 minute without you having to go down and read the structure. For example, it, 
you, all you need is that width, and then you have so much valuable information just by looking at the width. So it's super amazing. And if you guys wonder why this candle closed bears, it's the same scenario right there because the sellers were in control when the price closed. Okay. So the buyers couldn't really force that price up. The, the sellers still maintained control at the close. And here we had buyers maintained control at the close as well. Okay. So let's continue. So how can it be traded? How can we trade a wick? Well, first of all, like I said, a wick is a first sign of rejection. So let's say you're plotting out your zones, right? You want to trend, you want to trade the trends, like I showed in my previous video. So you draw out your zones, okay? You draw out your zones, and you basically wait for a proper retest, okay? You want, you want deep penetration into the zone, and you want to see, okay, is price rejecting? Well, here you start seeing very good signs right away, right? You see a wick into the zone. You start seeing price being exhausted, right? But you can still see that the buyers are trying to take control. We had some sellers momentum coming in there, but it's not strong yet. Then we have a first sign of a bearish candle, but it's not so strong, right? But then you have this candle, which is showing you a big, big rejection. Why? Because it's penetrating, first of all, deep into the zone, right? Deep into the zone. And it's showing you a big wick and closing uh, less than one third of the wick. So the body is, less, is one third of the wick, meaning that if the wick is three times bigger than the body, it's a sign of a huge rejection. Okay, so keep that in mind. And here you get your first reversal sign that, okay, it's time to enter the trade. You place your stop loss just above the wick. Right? Because here you have two confluences. You have the zone and you have the wick. So you place your stop loss above the wick. Just a little bit above the wick. And as you can see, the trend will then continue. So here is how you put together the, the zones with the price action. So you have two zones that you mapped out. And you start seeing that, okay, price is trending up now. And it's going up to that zone. But when do I know that it's rejecting this zone? Well, we look for price action confirmed, and that's one of those. Okay? Let's go to the next example. All right, so how can it be traded? Here we have another scenario. This, for example, is when price comes into a very, very strong higher time frame. When you see that price is trending down, but it starts consolidating, means also that it creates smaller narrow zones, as you can see here. When you have smaller zones, it means that price is dropping with momentum. And is usually this happens uh, when it comes to a higher time frame, because that's when you get the V pattern, for example. That's when the trend reversal starts. That's when the uh, smaller zones get um, made, so to say. So here you have the zones. But... You want to keep in mind that when you come into a weekly zone, for example, or a daily, you're going to see the lower time frames for our daily create a lot of wicks. Okay. And like I said, guys, when we have wicks to the, to both sides, so we have on the top and the bottom on the top and the bottom, that means what it means that price is in decision. We have both buyers coming in and sellers coming in. Both buyers coming in and sellers coming in. And price is closing in the middle there. So it's basically telling us what? Well, price hasn't really decided yet if it's going to go up or down. Okay? We also always have to keep in mind the 50% retracement level right here, right? Because that's also a zone. And that's something else that I talk about. But as you guys can see, it's so powerful when you put the confluences together. But let's continue here with the wicks. You start seeing a lot of rejection coming into the zone. Here you get a perfect shooting star pattern with a very small wick to the top side. Most of the time you want the wick to look like this. You do not want a big wick on the shooting star. Preferably guys, when you see a shooting star pattern, it should not have a wick at all to the upside. The less of a wick it has to the upside, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me do it in green so it looks like a bullish candle. Okay, so here, let's say we have a shooting star, okay? Here's the shooting star. 
if there is no wick to the upside, which is on the top here, it's going to be the strongest price action confirm you can have for a shooting star. If you do have a small wick, if it looks like this, they're still telling you that there's a little bit of rejection to the upside. So when you have candles like this, it could mean that price will continue going down and try to penetrate deeper into the zone. Then you can use these wicks as a take profit, which I'm going to show you. Okay. But you preferably want to have as small as a wick to the upside as possible on a shooting star and vice versa for a hammer candle. Okay. And a hammer is basically a shooting star, but turn upside down. Okay. Here you can see that when you start seeing all these wicks, all, all this rejection from a very powerful zone, this means that price is setting up. Okay. Price is setting up. Why? Because now you have two confluences. You have the zone premium premium price area which is usually the higher time frames okay you have the higher time frame zone right here and now you start seeing that price is actually creating a lot of wicks okay these two weren't your right confirms because it's showing you indecision but however it's telling you hey man pay attention right now we're in the premium price area wait for your trigger candle then you start seeing two shooting star patterns this one has a little bit of a wick to the upside but this would have been uh, a great, great price action confirm. So you see the shooting star patterns, you see all these wicks showing big rejection. It's time for you to enter the trades, okay? Based on the rejections you're seeing. But keep in mind now, you gotta scale out your take profits always. Even though it's a higher time frame, you always need to make sure that you scale out your profits. Your first take profit should be here. Your next can be these wicks that you see up here these wicks are going to be filled if price is in momentum okay they will be filled if price will move with momentum let me now show you the next example so using wicks for take profits so in this example i just want to show you guys when you have a candle that is let's say it's being or let's draw it here so Let's say we, price is trending up, okay? Price is trending up. We have a bullish candle, another bullish candle, another bullish candle. And then let's say we get uh, a few bearish candles, okay? So we have a few bearish candles going down. Okay? Let's say now this candle had a wick looking like this, okay? So it had a huge wick. This bullish candle had a huge wick. And now we start seeing that price is starting to trend up again. Okay, price is starting to trend up. We get a, let's say we get a shooting star pattern here. Okay, we have a huge wick. Now you can enter the trade and you can actually, instead of looking for the zones here, you can target this huge wick. Because it's the most recent footprint you get from price, most recent footprint, which is one of the most important. You have the most recent footprint but also, this is where price wants to return. Now, why do I say that? Well, think common sense now. Price came up, came up to this area and got rejected. Now it's trying for a second time to get back up there. Do, do you guys understand what I mean? It has been there before, meaning it's not a dangerous zone. Price has been there. It was able to tap it. Now we're getting more momentum. Of course, it's going to go up and tap into that area. That's why these wicks are so important because they're giving you footprints where market has been able to go before. So you don't have to guess. You don't have to say, oh yeah, we're going to go up to the monthly zone, which is up here. No, we start with the, the, the present. We had this wick price has, has been here before. We know that this is a safe area for price to go without reversing hard. So this is our first take profit, for example. So it's super important. And here I'm going to give you guys the example. So you can see here, Huge rejection, right? Huge rejection. Price is going down. But price came down to the first zone. We rejected the zone once again. And now price starts trending upwards, right? We get a price action confirmed for a bullish continuation in confluence with the zone we had right here, right? What can we do? We can use this wick right here as our first take profit. Fill the wick, all right? And as you can see, price, when it comes up with momentum, it's going to fill those wicks. Same here, you have another wick right here. But you want preferably to have larger wicks that you aim for, like these wicks. This is also a great example. So here, let's say now price is 
on the 15 minute comes down, taps into this zone right here, okay? So price comes down now on the next candle, taps into this zone. We start seeing 15 minute create rejection, take out the first high. Let's, t let's buy the trade. Where do we take profit? We fill the wick because what is happening? Price is in momentum. Where is it gonna go? It's gonna go and fill that wick. Another scenario, next candle, prints bearish. Okay, so we get a bearish candle coming down here and it closes below this zone, right? And let's say it creates a wick as well. What do we do now? We sell and we use these two wicks as a sign of rejection. Rejection, confirmation candle of the rejection, we sell. Where do we take our first take profit? Again, at the first zone, which is right here, right? Boom. We can also look at these wicks, but like I said, we want to aim for bigger wicks. The bigger, the better, the bigger, the footprint, basically. So what to think about now when you trade wicks, the higher time frame the wick is presented, the stronger the signal. So the higher time frame you're looking at, let's say you're looking at the monthly and you see a shooting star. That's going to be the strongest signal you can get from this price action pattern. Okay, if you get it on a daily, it's super, super strong, but weekly is stronger, monthly is strongest. Four hours is also strong. You do not want to trade wicks on the lower time frames. I say from 15 minutes down to five minutes and one minute. Don't think about that because you're going to have these signals being presented every single second to you, basically. So that's not good. You know, you, you want a solid confirm. So let it come from the higher time frames. Higher time frame wicks can be used for lower time frame scalpers. Like I said, you can fill those wicks based on the lower time frames and hunt that structure, change those structures so you can then follow the momentum and get those wicks filled. The larger the wick, the bigger the rejection, like I said there before. The larger the wick, the more price will return to that area in the future. Yes, that's true because the larger the wick is, the more orders have been filled there the orders have been taken out when price will return to that area there's not going to be a lot of orders left so it's going to fill harder wicks create premium price zones yes they create zones as well so that's important to know it can be more profitable than support and resistance if done correctly why do i say that very simple because it's the present it's the best price action you can have when you have the present market telling you what to do support and resistance is still coming from the past that's why we always use the 50% rule because we use price action to create those premium price for us. We use those wicks. Supply and demand is a pretty good example of using wicks for creation of supply and demand areas, but they should also be done in a proper way, in my opinion, by more using price action to let price action dictate the zones, not the wicks. So that's just my opinion, but yeah. But uh, for example, supply and demand uses a lot of wicks to gather those supply and demand areas. So that's good to know. Um, but yeah, I really hope this video is helping you guys. I think that wicks is one of the most important things you guys need to know about. So uh, yeah, hope you like it. Thank you.